Um, you can hear me, right? Oh, okay. I've got it. We can hear you. All right. Hold on. I have to adjust everything. Um, let me change the screen here. I'll try to figure out what's wrong. Why well, I couldn't get uh, audio. This is like the third time I've used it. I didn't have that problem before. So we're all good to go. Um, <coughs> excuse me, my, my voice is a little bit hoarse. Um, okay. I actually have PowerPoint stuff today. So we'll see. Join Palm. Vow, four great vows. I vow to deliver numerable sentient beings. I vow to cut off endless fixations. I vow to master limitless approaches to Dharma. I vow to attain supreme Buddhahood. The, uh, before I uh, start tonight, I would like you to join palms and we will give a deep vow and condolences to Susie, one of our members who passed away, I believe yesterday. So Amitofu, vow. I believe she's in good hands. Um, she had a great affinity with Guanxin Pusa. Uh, one of the things, let's say that our practice helps us is to understand passing and whether or not we in fact pass or we don't pass, um, it is something that gives us um, uh, courage uh, and a lack of fear as to what uh, comes next. Yeah. And uh, of course, those who are non-practitioners or of a different faith, you cannot tell them things like that in their time of grief. We share their grief. Um, this is natural. We're we're human beings and we're not robots. Uh, we still feel and we still understand um, these uh, situations um, and we deal with them in, in the middle way. Okay, tonight I want to talk about the method. As you see, I've been kind of going through the elements of uh, what need to be there for the essential practice of Chan and uh, essential to meditation in particular. But we cannot talk about these things without, the, um, without applying it to our daily life as well. And it's very interesting because when I began to think about what was I going to talk about, about the method, and what I, I really didn't want to do was give a class about the method. Um, I didn't want to give a class about, okay, this is the, the method of Huato or Salumination or counting the breath. Um, you've heard that. Um, I wanted to talk about what the method is, what it does, how we use it, why we use it, and, and who in fact uses it. Um, I think the last one is probably the most important. Who, who, who uses this method? So where we're at is that it seems very straightforward to talk about the method, yet it's really beyond our thought processes. Um, what does the method do when we think about it? What, what is the purpose of a method? Anybody want to share your sagacious knowledge with us? Yes, send that. go ahead. I don't know about the sagacious, but a return mind to mind. Return mind to mind. Okay. Uh, any anything else? Anybody else? What does the method do? Why why do we practice the method? You guys are all like the the ones that were um, in in the monastery with the six patriarch and Shen Hui, you don't want to say anything, you just let, write it on the wall later. 
Yeah, Michael. To, to stop dreaming, to stop engaging in uh, thoughts and attaching to thoughts, to establish a basis where there cannot really be any basis. But it's a good place to have to practice on, like a defined position. And, and who is doing that? Mind's compassion. Okay, anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, Robert. I think it's almost like the method of no method because you're not even trying to attach to or hang on to anything. You're doing it. You're just practicing, but you are not hanging on a... It's almost like it's so... Using word is impossible to express. You, you're following a way, but you are not hanging on, grabbing on that onto like this is the way, but you kind of know the direction. You just go. You always say four years ago, just jump, just leap and jump. It's almost like a faith. You, you don't even question the faith. You just go. And, and who jumps? Definitely not I. Definitely not 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 the I. It's the, your answer is your you say when you say who jump that is the answer who who jump. Well, I don't know if it's the answer, but it's a pretty darn good question. Um, yeah. But nevertheless, um, you're all all kind of uh, in around the same ballpark in terms of this um and you begin to see okay when i start talking about okay let's let's learn the method who's learning what what is this method for um as you said it, it doesn't really mean anything you know and um so it's something that we uh we kind of wonder it's as uh master ling chi said to bring forth the meaningless Watto. And people go, what do you mean meaningless? You know, I want to know what is Wu. No, it's meaningless, you know, because it's it's phenomenal. It's something that's appearing. So so something is appearing there in mind, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, We've got some uh, uh, comments, written comments here. Wendy, okay. Wendy Lee says, we use method to achieve Supreme Buddhahood. Okay. Anybody else? And David said it's a bookmarker. David said the bookmarker. Well, actually, my notes say, what does the method do? Bookmark. So you can't be too far from it. It's, it's precisely that. It's a book. Don't get too excited now. Um, but it's, uh, it's precisely precisely a bookmark it just keeps the mind in one place kind of like you want to purposely skip a record so if you're listening to ja johnny mathis and he's singing chances are chances are chances are oh, you can see my voice is gone today I, I can't sing like johnny mathis anymore then again never could um but in any case it's just Boom, 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 back and back, back, back. And so it's direct looking at mine with this method, I like use an M, that's right there, but it just keeps a bookmark to keep the mind in one place. We see through the method. The method is just there, but it's not really something that we see. It's meaningless. And because it doesn't have an additional thought, the method is a thought, right? It's, what is method? Well, I think method is something that we do when we meditate. We have to have a method. Gilbert always tells us that. Everybody tells us we have to have a method. Or what is your method? So we, so the method is there, but we see through it. Shifu used to say that it's like a big 
um, bullfrog so, sitting on a lily pad. It's sitting there and covering the entire uh, lily pad. So you can't see any of it. And that big bullfrog is the, um, the knowing mind. It is the mind that is aware of things. And because the method just keeps coming up, keep coming up, keep coming up, then you, you don't see it anymore. It's only function is just to be there to say, hello, don't pay attention to, to all those other thoughts. I'm right here. And then you try to put it front and center in the awareness of your mind and the focus of your mind. And when you sit, you should not expect anything out of your method. In fact, you don't expect anything out of the meditation. What are you going to get out of the meditation? What are you going to squeeze out of a method? Let's take the oldest method of watching your breath. What are you going to see? You can't even see it. If you blow, you can't see your breath. So what are you watching? The Buddha came up with this watching your breath, being aware of your breath, simply because there's nothing there. It's just the present moment. So you keep the mind in the present moment. The method is to keep you there in the present moment. Moment to moment to moment, you're holding on to the method. By now you can see, I'm not going to talk about the mechanics of method. This is much more different. This hopefully will help you understand what you're doing when you're sitting on that cushion, what you're doing when you're um, in life and coursing through life and, and being aware. You're not focusing on one object, you know, and to the exclusion of others. We see that. We don't have to direct our complete focus to the method. We just have to use it as a bookmarker. When we need it, we need it. And we go, oh, okay, here it is. This is where I was at before I was taken away by whatever fantasies that came in or horrors that came in through your mind to, to take you off, titillate your senses or scare you. Now you're back again. It's your bookmark. You just come back, gently coming back. You don't come in like a with a big marching band, the big eagle coming back in, like kind of like a ever ready bunny, you know, hitting a drum and saying, I'm back. No, you just gently come back. That's mine. Mine doesn't like to beat on uh, mine doesn't like to beat on drums, make a lot of noise. When we sit to meditate, we're there. And when we hold on to the method, we have a desire that rises up. This is the wrong way to practice. We, we sit um, like, like a, a, a poor boy outside a restaurant looking through the window. I want that but I can't get through. There's a glass right here. And so you sit. Hold on. Can you see that? You're looking at, I should have put it the other way or, or drawn it the other way, but there's the little boy and he's looking through the window and there's all the tables and all the delicious food. He's at a very fancy restaurant. I don't know if you can see that or not. Hold on. There it is. It's backwards because it's in a glass. I don't know if any of you can read that or not. El Ritz. And so he's there looking in. I want to be in there. And so he's sitting. And that's the way you are when you're sitting in a meditation. 
I want to have what Shifu has. I wish I could, but I'm too poor. I'm a poor practitioner. I can't, I can't go through. I can't practice. And, and you want to do that and you want, you want, you want. And so in the back of your head, you're looking at the way to meditate, but you're thinking in the ego to grasp, to grasp. It should be coming pretty soon. I've been sitting here 20 minutes and I haven't had any thoughts, have I? No, you haven't had any thoughts, I suppose. But that's the way you are. And so you're never going to get it. You're never going to break through that window. The thing is, is what you don't understand is it's not like you're a poor boy looking, looking through the window. Because there is no poor boy there. He doesn't exist. Only in the ego, there is a notion of this life and being this poor boy that can't break through. Of course, he can't break through. It's an illusion. But rather, when we meditate, we should immediately understand with right view that our error right now is, is that we are actually a king that's inside the restaurant and looking at the reflections in the window of the restaurant and taking the food plates in the window as a reflections for real. I just happen to have one of those pictures here. Let's see if I put this this way. If I can. And so you see, there is the king and the king is looking at the window here and seeing his reflection. He takes this reflection that's there as himself. He's very curious. It's not him. He's inside the restaurant. Not only is he inside, it's his restaurant. The whole realm is his restaurant. But he chooses to look at the reflection And, and then just take that for to be real. But he's the one that made the whole restaurant. So you have to see things in the right way. If you do, it changes the way you see things. And if you see it in the right way and turn the mind's eye inward, then you'll see the name of the restaurant. Ah, it's backwards again. Well, not on this one. El Ritz. So I don't know if you reading it saying El Ritz. Yeah, okay, good. Because <laughs> I have one screen that's showing me backwards and the other one showing me But in any case, that's just turning the things around so you see them from the, from the proper way. Um, so when we turn this mind's eye inward, what is seen? And by whom? But actually, this is what we call the noumenon, the appearances and uh, there are projected on the noumenon. Not only are they projected by the noumenon, but they're produced by the noumenon. So it not only serves as a screen, but it serves as the source of the appearances themselves. We do not understand that. And as a result, we take the reflections in the window to be real, even the reflection of the king. And we think that this is the true king, but he's so confused. He doesn't know where his province is. He doesn't know where, where he governs. He, just choose to take the reflection in the window and the food that he cannot eat. And he's so confused. The method allows us to bring all of that back into the right uh, order.
Could it be said that turning towards the inside of the restaurant uh, results in an infinite light? But su such light is not exclusive of the reflections. How can that be? So if we look at things and we see, and this essentially this, this restaurant serves as the example of the world itself, even the appearances, reflections in the window are taken as part of the province. When we meditate in the proper way and, and in the method, we don't have to discard the reflections in the window. They're naturally there. If there's a light there in there and he looks out, of course he's going to see a reflection. It's clear, he understands. And I say he, I'm referring to the king, but I don't want to get into a gender issue. You know, it could be a queen as well, okay? Um, but in any case, it is taken clearly that understands what is happening, where this appearance comes from. He doesn't look at it like, have you ever seen some dogs, um, um, and there's cats too that do this, but they won't admit it. Uh, they look at a mirror and, and they go woof, 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 you know, and they're trying to, to, to get something to go after this dog in the mirror. They're totally confused about that. And just like this king looking at the reflection in the mirror, taking it to be his, his true nature. His true nature is so much bigger, so much greater, but formless. So when we sit and meditate and hold the method, it's mind holding the method. It's mind producing the method, creating that method that is projected on mind. I've talked about this many times. It's simply a mind sandwich. And when you see that everything is set in its perfect place, but the way we practice is when we sit to meditate, we bring the ego up and the ego follows the method. I am meditating. Wait, who invited you to the party? You don't even have an invitation. Oh, yes, I do. I have it here. You made it up. Not only that, but it was, but I'm mine. So you, so this is, this is not a real invitation. You're phenomena. No, I'm not. I'm watching the method. So this is how you, you practice. And you practice in a way in which this part here, you see it's ego watching the method. And you'll see the little dotted lines and those little dotted lines indicate that what it believes to be mind and the borders of mind. And so these kind of, hold on. I don't know if that helps or hurts. Uh, these kinds of things, it doesn't see that there is actually, this is the observing mind here. The observing mind is observing the ego foolishly thinking that it is watching the method. So the ego here thinks that it's looking at the method while the observing mind is watching both. But because the ego is in the way, there's occlusions or obstructions in the mind that confuse the mind into thinking that these things are actually there. But when we get rid of the ego, the mind is very clear about this and it knows exactly what, what is projected there. But meanwhile, the ego is constantly arising and confusing the mind as to, as to its authenticity. And we have a saying in Spanish, and it goes like this. It's called a, a dicho or saying. 
And it says, estamos andando, dijo el mosco al güey. It's saying, we are walking, said the fly to the ox. So it's like this. I just happen to have one of these here. Um, it's a family heirloom, but I'll share it with you if you know this. So it looks more like a hyena. Forgive me now that I see it. But there's a little bug at the top here. And it's on the ox, and the ox is is walking. And so the ox is there, and it's doing all the work. But the fly says, we are walking. Really? You know? But this is what's happening when you, when you sit to meditate. When you sit to meditate, your ego goes, we're meditating. And mind you say illusion it doesn't have to brush it out of the way it'll leave on its own accord eventually because nobody's going to pay attention to it ah but therein lies the rub we start paying attention to things and as a result of paying attention to things we create habitual patterns so if something comes up in mind all of a sudden we want to see it. We want to, to evaluate it. We want to smell it, taste it, measure it, see if it's good, judge it. But it doesn't need to be that way. What happened to the meditation? Well, the ox is doing it. I, I don't have the time for that. I, I well, buzz off. Just buzz off. Go back to your method. Back to the method. When I say your method, I'm not talking about your method as individuals, but the method that mind is, is uh, functioning with at that moment. Mind is capable of doing everything that you can do, but better without you. Sorry to tell you that, but I'm talking about the truth. You're like a kid in the back seat of a car uh, with a family on vacation. When are we going to get there? I have to pee. I'm hot. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. I'm, 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 I'm. And that's how you meditate. Gee, my knees, no wonder you don't get anywhere. You, you can't get anywhere because you're an illusion. You have to put that down and go right to, to, uh, to the first stage. The first stage is Forget about the self. Just put the mind in the present moment on, on the method. Whatever method you want, it doesn't matter to me. You just put it there. And you're clear about it. And things will, will arise, but it, it doesn't matter. You're going to be clear about this. You know exactly what's happening. You listen to this and don't let yourself bore you. So the mind is clear about all these imaginings and appearances because it belongs to mind. So the mind is, is moving, but it's moving in a way that we don't understand. This is what is wu nian or no thought. We are engaged in the no thought of the method very clearly. But it doesn't generate subsequent habitual pattern thought that comes up and says, oh, I'm really doing good or, oh, I better better make it more clear or be more serious or whatever it is that, that could come through the mind. Mind is calm and still in its own awareness. In this awareness, this is what we're going to when we're, we're meditating is the awareness of mind, not your mind awareness of mind just mind we say just mind until we say somebody calls on to just mind and we say no mind so there was a, a story of of a master i forgot the names of the masters uh but uh one master um uh, his uh one of his disciples left uh to go to to establish his own temple. And so 
uh, the old master sent his um, his student, his present student uh, and disciple to go uh, find out um, how he was doing. So they were there sitting having tea. And so the 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 one master asked the the younger disciple, and what is master so and so up to these days? And he says, well, master so-and-so says there's no mind. And he said, that old codger, you know, when I was there learning from him, he said, everything was just mind. And now you say no mind. Well, to me, it's just mind. And so it's just this way. If you don't understand it, then you can have a cup of tea later. All thought is, is actually no thought. So we see it from the outside of the restaurant. All, everything is all inclusive. Shifu said that all dharmas, um, excuse me, oh, revolve, um, around the mind as its axis. So all dharmas, whether we call it phenomena or the dharmas of the dharma of, um, of uh, Buddha dharma, it all revolves around the mind as its axis. Um, here axis is like the hub. Oh. I have a picture there. And this is the, the, the axis, which is the, the mind. It has all of these um, spokes going out in all directions. They all come to the one. Mind has connected to everything that's there. And then anybody see this here? We say, on one 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 right w a n it's just the one symbol and it means a myriad of things and they all are, revolve around the axis and the axis is the mind let me make sure you, because some of you may not understand my pronunciation axis that's this little hub right here so when we sit to meditate we're there the method is there everything is clear the mind is not turned off we don't try to turn the mind off turn off the thoughts you're there and you're so upset that you can't stop the scattered thoughts and and I, I remember once that I um, happened to be in CMC, a Chan Meditation Center, and they were giving um, this one person that was uh, going to be a Dharma teacher a quiz. And then she, had, and I wasn't part of it, I was just viewing it. And then she had said, you know, as to my own practice, I'm trying my best and I'm trying to get rid of all of these thoughts. And and I said, why? And she looked at me like saying, what are you talking about? Of course, I have to get rid of these scattered thoughts. She goes, what do you mean, why? I said, why? And she goes, because they're there. I said, yes, they're there naturally because you put them there. They're naturally arising and they'll disappear naturally as well. You don't have to push them out. You just have to understand them from where they come from. She was flabbergasted, but in a very good way, absolutely stunned as if I had hit her on the side of the head with a two by four, which I did. It was a big cosmic two by four that I hit her on that side of the head with. And she was stunned. I mean, but joyfully stunned. Um, it was as if something changed. It was like shifting into a new gear and you kind of like on these, 
space programs, when they press the button and everything becomes rays of light, you know, it, so, so fast and powerful. But it hit her like that. And, and she got it right in that moment. It was just boom, because she didn't see it coming. And there it was. And, and that's the thing. When we sit to meditate, we don't pay attention to all of the scattered thoughts that are arising, but we don't try to drive them out of the mind. They're naturally appearing there. You trying to, to do that would be like you trying to broom a dusty floor. And, and as you're dusting it so hard and fast, the dust just simply lands somewhere else in the room. Everything has to be gently done, gently, gently, gently. So Robert would have gotten a better uh, result if you gently brush. After a while, now, if you ask him, how fast do you broom? You say, gently, gently, gently. We don't have to go. It will not, it will not help us. If one was to balance a spinning plate on a stick, the attention should be on the point of the stick that is uh, on the point of the stick and not the plate that's spinning. Um, I'm sure that you'll always see these Chinese acrobats and they have like 10 sticks with 10 plates and they're just spinning them around. You don't get the idea. So you have a plate that's spinning and the stick that's there. The plate is spinning very fast, but the, the stick is just kind of vibrating and, and everything is moving very quickly. The, the point is still, but everything is moving around it. It is aware of that. And the mind is aware of the ability to, to focus this way. So we focus our mind in this way and then the plate appears to be going in slow motion some of the ancient masters would talk about that and say if you do not understand this you'll be twisted and turned by all these different forces because you cannot see it you don't understand it it's going too quickly for you but when we bring it back down we focus the mind keep it in one place we don't chase after this thought or that thought or a different thought we're just very very calm in that present moment just with the method looking through the method completely calm all of the the different things that arise they um they are um just appearing and so um, when I was young, I used to love uh, Godzilla. I was old enough to be to see the original Godzilla movie. And, and watching the Godzilla movie, it would be on all the time. And um, on the, like the million dollar monster classic movies. And they played the movie so many times it had scratches so many little lines going through i don't know if you ever see old movies they have lines and the things and i remember uh, li listening to a comedian group and they were talking about about godzilla destroying this tiny miniature japanese village and he was saying that even the scratches on the film don't seem to affect them so they were just simply appearances and, the, and these lines going through like that, you'd think it would chop up Godzilla, but it didn't. He just proceeded on his way to, to do what he had to do, you know, to make his living. Um, it's a joke, but essentially what I'm saying is don't let all those scratches on the film affect you. Don't let all these arising do that. When you're meditating, you're just simply meditating. You just meditate. All these things are going to come up. I promise you they're going to come up. Guaranteed, 
you're not going to sit there unless you took five Valiums, you know, and 10 Xanax or whatever they put in, in just these days, and you knock yourself out, you're going to see a bunch of stuff. It's okay. It belongs there. It belongs there. Just like, like the king looking at his reflection in the mirror, it belongs there. Why? He put it there. You take responsibility for what's appearing in mind. It's all right. Let it go. You don't start looking at it and going, do I really look that old? Maybe I should shave or whatever. You do, don't pay attention to any of that. You just keep practicing. And, and you see that in this way. So it, back to my lecture, it says, the plate spins because the, the point moves, yet centralized in the middle. When engaged in Wu Yen, the plate, the method, spins uh, because of the point, the axis of mind, okay? So the axis of mind is keeping the method spinning in the mind. All these other things come up because of that, but we're clear about it that we only want this appearance to be um, um, focused upon. If the attention is placed in mind, even though the plate is spinning, the mind does not lose its central focus and all appears to be still. The mind awareness is instantaneous. Thus, there is no, there is stillness. The mind never loses focus. So if you keep this in this way, it is aware of all of these happenings and arisings in mind. It doesn't lose its focus because its nature is, has this uh, omnipotent part where it is, it is aware of everything. But it's aware of it in a state of equipoise or equanimity that it doesn't give a greater value to one of these thoughts that, that comes up. It just stays very, very calm. If we approach the practice as if we're holding on to the spinning plate, our true frame of reference will be difficult to maintain and we'll be lost in the apparent movement of the mind itself. So if we try to, to hold on to the method and then look at this and look at this and look at this and look at this and look at that, we're gonna be confused. Of course you get tired, of course you get frustrated, you're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong. You don't have to purge the mind from thought. You just don't look at it. You just settle down. If you get scared watching a TV movie, that's a, a, a horror movie, what do you do? You turn off the TV, hide under the bed, hope that the boogeyman's not there lying down with you. You're just aware that it is just an appearance. In fact, you turn the TV on. You wanted to see that program. Nobody told you to see that program at 12 o'clock with all the, the, the gory people go, going by. No, you wanted to see it. No, you got it. You understand that. So you just put it down. Whatever you, it was created in the mind, it can be uncreated. Not bad. This is simply because that, uh, that sees movement is illusory and cannot perceive the mind reality, only apparent reality, poorly constructed in a mind dream. We seek liberation from this side. We seek meaning. We seek, we seek, we seek. If we only turn our mind's eye inward and observe the method in the mind, there can be a transformation. But it cannot be there when you're sitting there and looking at your watch and hoping that you can uh, become enlightened before lunchtime. It won't work that way. You just do it and then forget about getting results. Forget about anything. Just let go of everything. Everything. 
So first, turning the mind's eye inward is not a directional change. This is something interesting because the Chan masters use this term to try to get us to, to see things from a different perspective. And is the, the perspective of mind. Um, but it, it isn't in, in that way. It's not that we turn the mind's eye inward as a actual physical uh, change of direction, 180 degrees. It's not 180 degrees. When we turn the mind's eye inward, it, it is as if you discovered that you were, you were wearing your sock uh, in a reverse. And then you take it off and you put it on and then it, it works right. Um, but it is not focusing on anything except for whatever appears as a function of the mind in the moment. Whatever the function is, is what we follow. But if it does not relate to the function of something, then we put it down. Uh, I remember there was a story about Bo Yen Fa Shi, and um, Shifu uh, did something that his master had done to him, which was he told him to move all the books from the library over to to another um, to another room, and and Goyen Fashev was just moving and moving and moving, and then all of a sudden he realized he completed it, but it only seemed like five minutes. It was very, um, it was something that was very uh, clear to him, very funny that how could that be like that because he was engaged in function. He did okay until Shifu told him to put the books back in the library, but. <laughs> That's natural, but that's definitely a Chan trick. Um, so when we see things, we don't look. I can get this right here. As as an ego looking into mind, ego looking at the method. Let's try to get that closer. You see ego looking at the method and I say this is not the way to practice it is not in this way when we sit to meditate when we're aware when we turn the mind's eye inward it is not reversing this process where where it goes this way it's more like this Let me see. there we go and all those represent eyes and the mind has this awareness it has this great awareness that in in all directions it's mine how could it not be it created it it should know where it's at it knows exactly where everything is at where it's been where it's going it's mine we cannot understand this but we can use that mind to meditate with this mind that has this total awareness Yet we maintain the function of watching the method or keeping our eye on the method. So let me see where I was at. Time. So when we talk about um, this and, and say, uh, first, turning the mind's eye inward is not a directional change. It is an unstained mind's awareness of the method without subject or object, such as I am watching the method or I am aware of watching the method. Oh, I'm so good. I'm aware of that. No. Where did the I come from? Anytime you start talking about things like that, just drop the eye off of it and see if it still works. This is a false signal masquerading um, sorry, um, as mine. Of course, it appears in mine, but it is phenomenal. So the noumenon is the suchness of the mind presiding over the appearances 
within mind. If it's functioning properly, it is functioning in this way. It is contributing to the environment what needs to be there, not what what is habitually driving a person or attracting them or detracting them. Um, The method appears, and because of the mind's function, remains as the fo- focus of the mind, but not to the exclusion of the arising mind. All phenomena that arises in mind, um, mind is instantly aware uh, of and aware of the causes bringing it forth. Mind is aware of the real active strength, frequency, um, and arising in mental states without cogitation. Uh, it, it is there, it's clear about these things, why they're coming in. But it, there's no linear thinking about that. That's severed off. Mind instantly knows that. It will come. Trust me, it will come. If you practice the method in the right way, it will come. If you practice it with the ego, applying the method it will not or it'll take a long time for it to happen but i'm showing you the shortcut to get there and it is a shortcut and it will work but you have to have faith in it um all seen is reflected on the walls of mind in a state of equanimity or equipoise nothing is excluded or cast out no fabricated silence or uh, dealing um, of the mind occurs. The mind is at rest, sitting on the method, relaxed, body and mind. Naturally, the mind will return to its unfabricated natural function. It will just keep coming back to that naturally. You get to a tipping point where it's harder to, to regress than to go forward. It is where they, in the sutras, they talk about no returners or once returner. And so they say, oh, this person will just come back once to finish up or he's beyond that. He's a no returner. Does that mean he's not coming back to samsara? No, but he has a choice. He knows that he can come back to samsara or he knows that it's there, but it's not returning to samsara as human sentient beings know it coming back it's an awareness that it's a dream we do not have to die to to get to that point we just have to practice sincerely and then that is what's called the great death because it's the death of the ego the death of ignorance it's a great death. That's a good death. Boy, that sounds good, right? How many are going to sign on for the great death? I don't see many hands going up. The uh, Robert will go. He'll, he'll go. He'll follow me anywhere. That's good. But yeah, he has faith. I mean, I, it's funny. I'm kind of joking about it, but it, it is. I mean, it is incredible. It's like raise your hands in the air and sing hallelujah because it is. it is something to to experience okay you first robert then tell me and if it's okay then i'll come back and you come back and tell me if i if i can go that way but in this way i've got a few more left i'm going to run over a little bit what we see is initially the circle representing mind and we have the method in the middle um, and dollar signs, a house, perhaps a pet there and a car over here. And then we have pet house, whatever you want money. And then there's the method. Everything is kind of in equanimity, but you see the red circle around. That means that's where you're, you're focusing your attention at. But everything is in a state of equipoise. It's rising and falling. And as you begin to practice that, 
then what happens is that you get to this point where you you see things in in this way Hold on, let me go back a little bit. and and that's the method is your central focus and you see the dog um the the car is receding the house is going out money is still kind of there but it's still getting smaller and smaller because its energy is dissipating and its frequency its intensity is going out and the mind is just overlaid with the method there's nothing else that's there so that we give this kind of a, a greater focus that the method is there and and all these other things are on the peripheral if you don't do it in that way what happens is what you normally do when you start meditating and you know and it's this where kind of zoom in a little bit um your method is on the way out money starts taking central position followed by the house whatever your desire is of the house and perhaps a pet okay you and so so you, the method is gone now and there is the sequence that's going there that is this um this line of of information um and this line of continuation that's why the ma ancient masters said we must sever this mind that desires continuation we don't have to continue anything everything will be easier you, you're not going to disappear i promise you you won't disappear you're not going to go and go oh where's my head i lost my head well, you lost that a long time ago i'm trying to give it back to you reverse the flow so we talked about mind is at rest sitting on the method relaxed body and mind of course naturally mind will return to its unfabricated natural function if thoughts manifest one loses that graceful experience of mind so long as mind keeps over uh, the perpetuation of the method then um, it will remain in this natural function so as long as you hold the method continuously i think we talked about this already right continuous but now we're on the method and you see how it relates if we continue we watch it then it will work if thoughts are allowed to take center stage then the method uh, may be instantly or gradually lost by failure to keep the mind's attention um, on the method if this occurs then gently bring the bring yourself back to return to the method the method to be used properly must be based on certain doctrinal foundations one of them is ekayana um justice mind or if you're more progressive john master no mind um but it literally means the same method is is uh phenomenal there's no magic to it it's like uh dumbo's magic feather so in the old walt disney cartoon where dumbo thought he needed the feather to fly you know and if he lost the feather he couldn't fly you're holding on to dumbo's magic feather okay and you go this is it what is woo what is woo what is woo what is woo i don't hear anything what is woo what is woo you know and you'll probably have uh you know just as good a luck uh trying to spin a, a stick like this on another stick to try to make fire so if you haven't done that before try it and see how good you are with that um you place the meditation within mind alone um you utilize right view this true and proper understanding so before you sit you have to know what you're doing you have to know what 
what this is about. You have to know that the, ma- the, the method is not magic, that you're precisely just keeping a bookmark with that method. This is just the way it is. And when you bookmark it in this way, it will work. And so I don't know whether David knew that from hearing me from another one or not. It doesn't matter, but he it stuck with him. And that's good because that's important that you understand that the method is just a bookmark, nothing magic to it. You're not trying to transform anything. So don't close your eyes and call it meditation. We are unaware of all the subtle and not so subtle movements of mind. We cannot be because we are in fact a movement of mind. So us to say we are aware of anything, we are a movement of mind itself. When we understand that, then we turn mind to its rightful place, the king of the restaurant. But the difference in there is the king sees the reflections and knows precisely that this is just a reflection or a dream. Now there's a liberation to course through this lifetime unobstructed. I wish I was at that level. I cannot say I'm at that level, but I try. That's why they call, I call myself a practitioner, but I try. And each day it gets a little better and a little better, clearer. And you are the the benefactors of that clarity, as I hope you will be for others in the future. Um, So we have to be mindful of pratika samapada causes and conditions never fail. The more we hold the method, the more we hold the method. It's as easy as that. So I, I better copyright that one. The more we hold the method, the more we hold the method. It might be worth something in the future. The right effort must be utilized. So we have to give it, give it its due effort. We can't just sit there and kind of like watching some program, some movie. You ever watch the movie like the first five or ten minutes and you're not really sure you want to watch the rest of it. So then you start pulling out your phone. And you start seeing what happened in the world and what's going on, you know, and who's going to be on Dancing with the Stars or whatever. Um, And and so that's a very weak effort. You have to put in the effort that ties in with Pratika Samapada. This is the key. It is the key. You've got to do it. You, you, You can't just do it in a in a weak way, like you're watching a poor movie because you're going to get bored and you're going to have a poor experience from that. Why? Because even without understanding the other elements of the present moment, awareness, um, continuousness, when we hold on to this and we do this in the right way, we and we practice and we stay on the method, eventually it's gonna click in. It may take a lot longer to do it that way than the, the shortcut, but nevertheless, it's there. But without uh, any continuous practice uh, on, on holding onto the method, forget it. It's not going to work. If you do it in the right way, guarantee you that it will work. Remember that Gilbert's money uh, money back, lifetime guarantee. Okay, you don't get it this time, you'll come back next time. I will try it again. But it will work. Okay. Um, and I think that's where uh, I will end this. It, if you put all of these elements together, it'll all click in. I promise you, it doesn't matter what kind of a method. So here we are at the end of my talk about the method without ever talking about the method or a method, but that's the method. So I'm going to go Questions?
No questions? Did you understand this? Yes, Robert. Uh, uh, somewhere in the middle at, at seven o'clock, you say, you, you, you mentioned a sentence, you say, all thought is no thought. I'm still a little, I mean, not I, I'm just confused. All thought is no thought when you say that. That's good. I'm, I'm glad you're confused um, because it's kind of um, a cosmic Rubik's cube that you have to keep turning the facets and keep turning it and turning it and say, what does that mean? All thoughts are no thought. Who thought about that? Who was it that thought about that? If there was somebody, or let's say, if, let's say there's, there's nobody there that can step up and say, I thought that, then would it not be no thought? Because the thought would have to be generated from some life and being that has this continued existence. But if it isn't, then isn't that thought just a dream manufactured by mind, including that one who thought he thought about no thought? Think about that. Rather contemplate it. Do you see or not see? Can you see or not see? Who wants to become enlightened? I don't know if who's here today. Poor guy. He, he, there he is. I see you. Who do you want to become enlightened? <laughs> I always put him on the spot. Um, he's very shy, but, but a good practitioner. My, my brother from another lifetime. <laughs> don't you don't see the resemblance? <laughs> I just need some glasses. But in any case, what do you think, Robert? Robert is still confused, but it's okay. Robert will be confused because Robert cannot figure this out. Only if the Robert allowed the mind, I mean, the mind to, I think the mind know, but Robert never know. Yeah, at least you start with, let's say, right view. So, so you're well ahead of the curve because you have right view. And that's, that's very, very important for you to know. So that's, that's good. Okay. So, but it's interesting. So, um, so, and then Sue, you've been so quiet so long. You normally are participating. Did you fall asleep? No, I'm, I'm in the car. So. Oh, okay. I don't want you to crash. Yeah, but, but I'm, not, I'm not driving in the car, yeah. so I don't want to. Yeah. It's not very clear anyway uh, if I uh, turn on my video. But I've been listening. Okay, good. Thank you. No problem. Is there a, I but think. Christoph has a uh, comment. All right, go ahead. Uh, he says the. the Christoph, do you want to you want to say it yourself? No. All right. Uh, he says the past thought cannot be found, the future thought cannot be found, and the present thought cannot be found. So who thought that up? Very interesting. But yes, I I, I have read that. And um, I can't, Harry, do you know where that quote comes from? A diamond well, sutra. Well, it's sort of the diamond sutra, but not exactly. It's yeah. I, I seem to remember it. Um, I seem to remember it was somebody saying that to somebody else, you know, to, to say, what is that? You know, kind of a thing. Like, can you answer that? You know, speak kind of one. Oh, it's a it's a koan. Um, the old the old woman at the tea shop who asked someone. I think that's where it comes from. Yeah, and then she just says speak or something because yeah. it's looking at it because it 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 it, it is one that essentially um, points to the heart of the matter in terms of this 
existence or non-existence, but you can't really answer it, you know, because because it's beyond any kind of a, of a verbal response, except for maybe slapping her, but then I don't want to perpetuate that kind of conduct now, you know, slapping an old lady and say, what is that? You know, speak the sound of one hand clapping. But um, no, I, it, I, I love that one actually, um, because it, what it does is it points directly to mine. Who was it that said this one? Um, I, I have to look. It, it's it's a woman who uh, um, runs a tea shop, and and a great practitioner comes in, and she asks him, who you know, what um, whether it's the past, present, or future. When is he having the teeth? Something like that. I, I don't remember it exactly. Uh, yeah, I can look it up. I, I know where to find it. Okay, ask the question, or where where did he find this question? <laughs> uh, he so. says that he's got some connection problems, so he's not sure if he can hear. Yeah. yeah, I would think so. Okay, Diamond Sutra. Christoph says it's in the Diamond Sutra. So there we go. But I know it's in in uh, some other other things as well. But yeah, that's good because it's like essentially saying that the past is gone, the present hasn't gotten here, and so too is is excuse me, the past, the future hasn't gotten here, the present is is non-existent because it's between the two. So it's showing directly the negation of this idea of time. Uh, and which is a very, very strong one because anything that we do this way, what we want to do is we cut off linear thinking and we cut off time and then we cut off space. It's quite interesting at that point what, what you can rest on because it's kind of like going, oh, I'm going to rest here. Oh, and there's nothing to hold you up. And that's, that's something that's very, very important. Indeed, nothing will hold you up. Okay, anything else? Esther. Hello, um, Gilbert. Um, I remember in the past, uh, you have uh, lectured on a topic on, uh, probably mentioned Numenon. Um, and, then, and in this talk today, you mentioned at least three times. But I also remember that you said um, this is a term that is used by Western philosophers and that we shouldn't get confused. So my question is, how is it um, that you mentioned it three times today and how is it um, correspond to, for example, what we are learning, uh, maybe perhaps um, in relevance to Tantai school or the Hawaiian school. Is, is there like uh, a corresponding uh, term to Numenon? Yeah, um, it is a school on all on its own. So in the course of answering a question on it, I cannot possibly teach you the, the school. Uh, all I can say is that it is a good reference point to indicate that there is, we don't tie ourselves simply to phenomena um, and see the world defined as phenomena. But on the other hand, we don't see things as, um, as a noumenon because that would be nihilistic because then there would be nothing there. There, there's nothing. But in fact, there is nothing there. It is this idea of emptiness, but this emptiness is not the different, it's different than the emptiness of a Western notion of an empty bucket. In fact, it holds everything, including the bucket, and everything is made out of the fabric of mind. When we begin to understand things in this way, we don't throw out, and that's why I was pointing to the picture of the king looking at his reflection in the uendo. He is aware of that. He's aware that there's this. I'm looking at myself um, on my, my laptop as I'm talking to you, and I don't see myself. If I did, I would go, oh, wait a minute. What's there? No, I, I, I just talked to you. 
I'm aware of that. And, and it's just in this way. You function in this way. So the phenomena are just appearances, just as like when I talked a, a while back, um, I don't remember the exact name of the sutra, but it had to do with Manjushri and appearances. And um, it's also the same as the Manjushri one in terms of, of the dwelling place uh, where Manjushri abides. It is something that we simply say that it's mine, but there's many ways of approaching that, whether we talk about inquiry of matching halves and that there is a uh, the phenomenal aspect and then there's a new nominal aspect. Even after these years, I can't get it quite right. I think you, you said it better than I did. But in any case, those those things are clear. We see that there's this part. It, there is an acceptance that transcends the idea of, of uh, things in terms of interpreting this, where we say it is or it is not. Is it existent or non-existent? Nakarjuna didn't entertain uh, that question. It, it is just simply the suchness of things. And as we begin to practice, as we see things in, in a clear way, then we understand what mind is. And when I say we understand, it's not like we can, we can um, spot it and, and say this is it. We understand how it works. And that's what's important. So we, to, for us to do things, we have to be very, very clear in our mind as to how to practice. And when we practice, we, we let go of the phenomenal, but we nevertheless do our work in the phenomenal. Because even though I see all these faces and I say, I don't see you, I still sense suffering. And wherever there's suffering, I will be there. It's just this way. Is Gilbert going to be there? Mind will be there. The heart will be there. And, and this is what we see. We have to transcend these kinds of things. Don't try to look at it um, in a way that you try to make sense, um, logical sense out of something that transcends the idea of logic. And sometimes that may, may sound foolish to say something like that, that, that we don't dwell on the logical we don't dwell on the logical of the samsaric realm. The samsaric realm is governed under certain rules and certain ways and follows and, and is interpreted by the senses. But suppose there's something much greater than that, that, that sees past, present, future without any idea of linear thinking about it, instantaneous that understands the thoughts of others, that can be in, in one place and can be in all places and never abide in any of them. How could we even begin to, to define that other than just say this is the suchness of the mind? And the more we practice, the more we become adept at that, the more that the mind will actually uh, open up and it will seem like, oh, this person has extra sensory powers or they have this or that. They don't have anything. It's just the function of the mind. Mind opens up and, and all of a sudden there's more access to information than there was before. So you, you see things and you try to do that. I was recalling um, this last weekend that my parents had the foresight, uh, this Mexican family, to buy me a set of Encyclopedia Britannica. And it was about 24 volumes in fine print. And you know what? I read that. I read it. I read it almost every day. I would sit there and read it and wait for the book of the year to find out what I missed because all I got was from the newspaper and from, from uh, the TV, but there was so much more there that I saw. And now with the internet, there's so much information that's on there. And you just have to say, hey, Google, find me this. Uh, I don't talk to Siri. We're not on speaking terms these days. 
Uh, but I, but Google and I get along real fine. Um, but in, in, in any case, um, imagine the jump from Encyclopedia Britannica to, to uh, the internet and then multiply that by 10 million to infinity, times infinity. And that's mine. We cannot possibly know that, but yet we see that, and it it for us defines and interprets the noumenon and the phenomenon. They are not they are not two. They are the one, and this one is not even a one. It is what the one returns to, which is a suchness. So this is how you you see this. Don't get caught up on the terms. If you get caught up on the terms. You'll just go around chasing your own tail. But if you open your mind, you see this. Oh, it's so incredible. So very, very incredible. Okay. Yeah. And that was what I was trying to get to you today to get you a feeling for this mind. If you practice in this way, if you meditate in this way, you too will see how incredible it is. You'll see the infinite aspect of mind what's infinite you, you, i mean you 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 will never get there for sure um and but it's there it's just there it's absolutely amazing so i i hope to share that with you and i hope to explore further reaches of it with you as well some of you now are more colleagues than you are my students. And, um, and I invite you to continue to practice in this way. You know, we have kind of like the old man Rick over there. I call him, oh, I, I may be older than he is. He just went whiter sooner. I went balder than him though. But Rick is a very quiet person, but is a, a very good example of a great practitioner. And so I, I have to, I don't sometimes talk too much about him, but he's always been there from the very, very first, he's the, the most senior student. So I'm a tofu to you, Rick, and be safe in the Philippines. So anything else? No, no questions? All right, you're gonna leave me talking to myself today. So uh, please keep our sister Susie in your um, your recitation and um, give her family strength, okay? Um, so we will, I guess, stop for the night and I'll think of something uh, even more clever next week to come up and talk to you about. So, omitofo. Stay safe, vaccinate, mask, okay? I don't see too many masks out there. All right. Wash hands. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay.